Any day is a great day for Cultaholic to produce a list honoring everybody's favorite Bulgarian professional wrestler. For every day is Rusev Day. There have been a great many wrestlers that have earned places in our hearts, in wrestling halls of fame, and in other realms of immortality, but Rusev is the only wrestler worthy of having a daily secular holiday in his honor. And it is only by Rusev's endless grace and generosity that every Rusev Day still has post delivery and bin men. Now that is a gentleman and a scholar. Truly, Rusev has it all. A holiday in his honor, a best friend who sings about him, as supportive a partner as a man could possibly have, and he sometimes gets to make an entrance in a pissing tank. If there's anything more to life than having those four things, we'd certainly love to hear it. Well, perhaps there is one thing, a cultaholic list in one's honor. Let us celebrate this blessed occasion with a look at some fascinating facts about our hero and yours, the man who makes all of our lives worth living, Rusev. Enjoy this offering of Rusev facts, and may you and yours have a wondrous Rusev day. I'm Sam from cultaholic.com, and here are 10 things you didn't know about Rusev. Rusev de- I mean, join us. Number 10, Instilling Attitude. In his early 20s, Rusev emigrated to the United States from his native Bulgaria, pursuing his dream of becoming a professional wrestler. He would eventually settle down in California, where he'd begin his training at the Knox Pro Wrestling Academy in the city of Burbank. His trainers would be none other than two recognizable faces from WWE's Attitude Era, Gangrel and Rikishi. The promotion posted a video in 2009 of Rusev, then going by his given first name of Miroslav and nicknamed the Bulgarian Bulldozer, going through rigorous training sessions, which which included a somewhat alarming clip of him doing flies with a tire in each hand. Rikishi would later commend Rusev after he made it to WWE, lauding him for being a good listener and for putting in the necessary work. At the time that Rusev was signed by WWE in the fall of 2010, he was, according to the Wrestling Observer, the second student of Rikishi and Gangrel's Knox Pro School to be signed by the company. The first, Ricardo Rodriguez. Number 9. Powerful Influence In the earlier portion of Rusev's run on the main roster, he was booked like many heavyweight foreign heels before him, as an unstoppable force of nature with a brutish moveset, a high tolerance for pain, and the capability of building a long winning streak at the expense of the babyface side of the roster. The pro-Russia version of Rusev that hailed Putin and attempted to crush the patriotic John Cena claims to have studied the work of a wrestler that had a similar career path. In a 2018 interview, Rusev credited the late great Umaga for inspiring some of the manner in which he performed forms. No small coincidence that Umaga was the younger brother of his trainer, Rikishi. In the interview, Rusev said that he would watch Umaga's matches and take little things from the work of the Samoan bulldozer to help form his own ring style. In some ways, you can see the influence, as both Umaga and Rusev appeared to be in their elements as destructive villains that left their opponents in broken heaps. Number 8. Make a wish. Remember when Becky Lynch was an exuberant river dancer? Or when FCW era Roman Reigns posed for studio photos while dressed like the coolest of the world's cool kids? WWE developmental programs have had their share of success stories, but the word developmental applies to more than just sharpening a young wrestler's in-ring instincts. It's also about finding gimmicks and character quirks that can get the most out of said wrestlers. In Rusev's case, while he thought he had more to offer than simply being a stereotypical foreign heel, it was Dusty Rhodes who presented him with a much much more peculiar idea. He wanted Rusev to be a genie. Instead of seeing Rusev as the modern day Nikita Koloff, the American Dream saw Rusev as a character that would pop out of a magical lamp, where he would presumably grant wishes to the individual who rubbed his lamp, which sounds a bit like a disturbing euphemism now that I've heard it out loud. Dusty Rhodes had many wonderful and ingenious ideas throughout his decades in professional wrestling, but it's hard to imagine Rusev the genie being seen on the same level as war games. Number 7. A Pretty Good Debut June 9th, 2011 would be an important day for the man then known as Alexander Rusev. He would be wrestling his first match for then WWE developmental group, Florida Championship Wrestling. The broadcast in which Rusev wrestled his first bout would feature a host of familiar faces, including Big E, Bo Dallas, AJ Lee, Fandango, and even Sue Young. And it turns out that Rusev's opponent on that card would gain a little bit of notoriety later on as well. Alexander Rusev's opponent on the show was another wrestler making his debut, a 23-year-old Canadian by the name of Mike Dalton, who would later go on to find his calling as the preening Prince Pretty himself 
Tyler Breeze. Dalton was still two years away from adopting the narcissistic, self-absorbed gimmick, while Rusev seemed to be on a faster track at the time, partially because he didn't have to play a genie. Number 6. Bestowing Accolades According to Rusev, his original finisher was the Machka Kick, but he would soon have the Camel Clutch suggested to him as an alternative. That Camel Clutch would later become known as the Accolade, preceded by a hard stomp to the small of the opponent's back. Rusev claims that while he was down in NXT's Performance Center, it was Terry Taylor, the rest and trainer once sadly made over into the Red Rooster, who suggested using the Camel Clutch since it was the Sheik's move. It's unclear whether Rusev means the original Sheik or the Iron Sheik, since both used the Camel Clutch, but whichever it was, Rusev would be pattering part of his career after a truly awesome predecessor either way. As a funny side note, at the time, Rusev was concerned about using the Camel Clutch, since it was also Jinder Mahal's finisher at that point. According to Rusev in an interview with the website Vulture Hound, he expressed his concern to Triple H, who reportedly responded, well, Jinder hasn't won a match in a while. Number 5. A Bad Break Rusev's first couple of years down in WWE Developmental were marred with a few unfortunate injuries. Just weeks after his 2011 in-ring debut, he tore his ACL in his knee and would end up sidelined for nearly seven months. The only other major injury Rusev sustained, this one in 2012, would shelf him for six months, but comes with a bit more of a frightening tale. Rusev himself isn't exactly sure when or how this happened, but in or around July 2012, he somehow broke his neck. And it seems as though Rusev didn't even notice at first, because he continued onward with his wrestling career until his right arm just stopped moving. He first assumed that it was an issue with his shoulder, but an MRI would prove differently. The fact that Rusev had a broken neck and didn't even realize it until one of his limbs went dead is both a testament to the man's genuine toughness as much as it being downright frightening. I mean, I call it a day whenever I get a paper cut or stub my toe, and that bloke's out there matchking the competition with three functional limbs. Number four, a negative into a positive. As noted, Rusev would be out of the ring for six months while recovering from his broken neck. But rather than lazing around being a couch potato, Rusev decided that his injury layoff would be best spent adopting a new skill. And what skill would that be, you ask? Knitting, whittling, pooping from a height? No, my friends, he took up the martial art of Muay Thai. Yes, while mending a broken neck, Rusev took it upon himself to travel to Thailand and study Muay Thai, some techniques of which he would work into his professional wrestling style. According to Rusev, part of his intensive studies while over in Thailand involved kicking trees with his bare feet in order to strengthen his legs. And it seems to have worked, since the man's thighs are about as thick as most wrestlers' torsos. You'd think doing so would have led to Rusev's third major injury while under WWE contract, that being shattered feet, but apparently not. Number 3. Package Deal When WWE put Rusev and Lana together down in NXT, it was a match made in heaven. Almost literally. The pair have been wed for almost two years now, and it's hard to think of one without thinking of the other. In their Russian phase, they were WWE's answer to Ivan and Ludmilla Drago. Rocky IV reference. Yes. According to Lana, when she demonstrated her ability to speak Russian at her audition, she was paired with Rusev shortly after. It was following her first promo class that Dusty Rhodes wanted her to work with Rusev, thinking they were a perfect fit. Lana would also add that when Rusev and her were preparing to be called up to the main roster, there was only one person in power that was unsure about Rusev being partnered with her, and that was Vince McMahon himself. She claimed in a Talk is Jericho interview that Vince was enamored with the monster heel version of Rusev and was on the fence about pairing Lana with him, whereas everybody else Triple H among them fought to include her. Clearly, Vince was the one that caved in this instance. Number 2. Champion of the People On November 3rd, 2014, in a post-Raw match that was exclusive to WWE Network, Rusev defeated Sheamus to capture the WWE United States Championship. Going back to the United States title's inception in 1975, this would mark the first and so far only occasion in which the United States Championship would change hands from one European-born wrestler to another. Overall, Rusev is the fourth European-born wrestler to have held the United States belt, either in NWA, WCW, or its migration over to WWE following the 2001 WCW buyout. Preceding him are the Irish-born Sheamus, his fellow Irishman Finlay, and Swiss-born Cesaro. Apparently, the qualification for European-born wrestlers to hold the United States belt is to have a one-word name. That said, we look forward to one day seeing a United States triple threat match between wrestlers simply named Bala, Wolf, and Alistair. As far as Rusev goes, he and Sheamus have had the distinction of being the only two-time European-born US champions, but the tiebreaker is that there's no such thing as Sheamus Day. Sorry, Sheamus. Oh, and before anybody says anything, Roddy Piper and Santino Morella were both born in Canada, so sit down. And number one, bringing it back. 
As noted in the introduction, Rusev made a spectacularly legendary entrance at WrestleMania 31, when he arrived for his US title defense in the hatch of a tank, which would have been the coolest vehicle in WWE Crush Hour had the super athlete been around back then. But this fact is sadly not about that sweet, sweet ride of Rusev's. It's about the title match itself. By defending the US title against John Cena that night in Santa Clara, Rusev became the first wrestler since Chris Benoit at WrestleMania 23 to defend the US Championship on a WrestleMania main card. Hard. Between Manias 24 and 30, it apparently didn't behoove champions like MVP, The Miz, Santina Morella, Cesaro, and Dean Ambrose to actually defend the belt on the grandest stage of them all. Sheamus would have defended it at 27, but he and Daniel Bryan were pushed to the pre-show. Nonetheless, he did America proud by defending their namesake belt on the main card, and this is why they're proud to celebrate Rusev Day every day. And that's our list. I've been Sam from Cultaholic.com. You can follow me on Twitter here. You can follow all of us at Cultaholic. If you like what we do here at Cultaholic, you can check us out on Patreon. That's patreon.com forward slash Cultaholic. And never ever forget to hit subscribe and join us.